What's going on guys, your boy Fluff here. Today, as promised, we're bringing you a guide on the Veer Rasha. Easily the most popular wizard build this season. Uh, it's great for speed farming solo GRs. It's great for group setups. Uh, it's great for T13 if you so choose. But without further ado, let's get into it. So a couple caveats before I start getting into the gear and how this all works and the mechanics and stuff. This is not my build. Uh, I will be posting the Diablo fans build in the description below. Uh, we did not come up with this. We're not taking credit for anything, so nobody freak out. We made a lot of requests for, to do a video guide uh, on stream, and you know we live in a digital age, so people like the YouTube format maybe more than they like the written guides on Diablo fans, and so that's what we're here to do. So, the gear. Let's talk about what this whole thing revolves around. First and foremost, this revolves around Manald Heal, like a lot of wizard builds this season. <laughs> Mine out heal. Enemies stun with paralysis also take up to 14,000% weapon damage as lightning. Now, a few really important things to note with man alt heal, and there's a whole list of really important things I definitely recommend if you guys are making any kind of man alt heal build, uh, you're using it, you really want to understand the mechanics of it and how it works. But four of the really most important things to understand with man alt heal is one, you'll see it on this list, and we'll, we'll put this in the description. Elemental damage on your gear does not increase man alt heal damage. Furnace elite damage does not increase man alt heal damage. That's a really important one. So before you guys ask, why not use furnace in the cube? That's why. Uh, Bane of the powerful elite damage does not increase man alt heal damage. And Bane of the powerful multiplier does not increase man alt heal proc damage. Those are the four, I think, most important ones. And I would definitely recommend, you know, reading this full list. And again, we'll put it in the description below. Now, the two other really, really important items for this build is the Swami, which the bonuses from Archon stacks now last for up to 20 seconds after Archon expires. That's really important. And also, Fazula's Improbable Chain, you automatically start, start with up to 50 Archon stacks when entering Archon form. Those are two really important items. You got to have them on. Um, in this particular setup, we're running Tau 6 and Veer 4. Um, with three in a roll grander, so technically Tau 5, Veer 3. Um, you gotta work out either you're gonna wear the Tal Rasha belt and you're gonna have the Swami in your head slot, or you're gonna have the belt on and the Tal Rasha in your head slot. Either way, you gotta have both of these items, one in the cube, one you're actually wearing. So the dream is to stay in Archon, buff up crazy man all deal damage. Destroy absolutely everything on your screen. Elites die in like seconds. It's amazing. So, again, we're using Tal 6, Veer 4. Why these particular set pieces, um, we're going to talk about real quick. Uh, two piece Veer says Archon gains the effect of every rune. Again, we are all about Archon in this build. You want to stay in Archon, you want to keep Archon going. So, getting the effect of every rune on Archon is a must. It's amazing. Uh, four piece Archon stacks increase your attack speed, armor, and resistances by 1%. The armor and resistances, that's, you know, that goes on said, more toughness, awesome. Um, and the attack speed is really, really important with with Archon and Manal Heal, especially because the faster you're attacking with Manal uh, Heal, the more you're going to blow up mobs with that proc. Talrasha 6. Uh, attacks increase your damage by 750% for 8 seconds. Arcane, Cold, Fire, Lightning. Uh, each add one stack at four stacks. Each different elemental attack extends the duration by two up to a maximum of eight seconds. So this is going to buff our damage by the same amount if you have all four elements going. Um, this will drop. So you'll have this going for the first eight seconds of Archon, but after that it will drop. So don't freak out. You're like, how can I not keep the four stacks of Talrasha going? Well, it's supposed to work like that, so don't freak out. It's fine. Um, another really good item with this build is Starfire, which says lightning damage is increased by up to 15%. For every 10 yards you are away from the target, uh, up to a maximum range of 40 yards, so you get flat 60% damage bonus, which really, really works well with Zyze, which we were using also. So the, the point of this whole build is to stay away from bad guys, you know, range them down with your giant Cyclops laser. And another thing that really works well, you know, by staying far away from the mobs is Power Hungry. You deal 30% additional damage to enemies further than 30 yards. We have a lot of bonuses here for staying far away from the enemy, so that's what you definitely want to do. Nemesis we're wearing, because again, this is a speed build, guys. Every time you hit a pylon, you're going to spawn an elite, and when you kill an elite, you're going to get more Ingyam juice, which we're using in the cube. Ingyam reduces the cooldowns, you know, by 10 seconds, uh, for 15 seconds after every pack, so, you know, the more you do this, the 
more bonuses you're gonna get. You're gonna be flying around the rift, killing everything. It's amazing. The jewelry slots, you know, we're running Ringo Royal Grander, like I said, because we're running Veer 4 and Talrasha 6, so we need this uh, either in the cube or where on your person. Ideally, you would want a Man Alt Heal um, to wear, uh, but you really need to roll a CDR Man Alt Heal, and that's kind of hard to do. <laughs> Because this, this ring can roll all over the place. The majority of your season is probably going to be spent on, you know, either re-rolling the mana alt heal from bounty mats or upgrading rings to get a really good mana alt heal. It's all about this ring. Um, the dream would be to get crit damage, crit chance, and cooldown reduction. I don't even know if that's actually possible. I have no idea. Plus, on top of trying to get a dream rolled mana alt heal, you want this damage roll to roll, you know, it goes 13,000 to 14,000. The higher you can get towards that 14,000, the better. So this is a really, really hard item to get perfect. And of course, we're going to use Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. That's so when we're out of Archon, we can spam our Arcane Torrent Static Discharge to decrease the cooldown of Archon and get right back in Archon, because that's what we're all about in this build. So stats. This build is all about cooldown reduction. We want to have around, you know, 62.6 would be the dream. Um, you can get away with, you know, like 58 plus, uh, you can do pretty well still, but the dream is to have 62.6, which is basically having perfect cooldown in every slot besides the necklace. From the gloves, you want intelligence, crit damage, cooldown reduction, crit chance. You see here we're missing that 1% and it actually does affect the build. The higher the cooldown, the better. The shoulders, invite. Cooldown reduction, preferably armor here and get like a physical on the secondary. Talrash's helmet, you know, int fight, uh, crit chance. One of the benefits of wearing the Swami is you get that arcane power on critical hit. Um, and if you have that on both your your helmet and your offhand, it can make those times that you're out of Archon really, really easy to just like hold down static discharge and get that cooldown down like immediately. Don't have to worry about arcane power. Um, I personally like to run... Just one, uh, which is on the offhand, because when you're killing elites as fast as you do in this build, the dream is that you'd only have to kill one, uh, maybe two, uh, between every Ingyam proc, or between every Archon. Um, and I didn't find that I really ran out of Arcane Power with just the APOC on the offhand, so I personally prefer to run the Fazulas and Probable. But, you know, if you're finding yourself running out of arcane power, this is definitely a great option. Plus, you lose the vitality if you go this route, which, you know, you're pretty squishy in this build already, so it doesn't matter that much, but it's nice. Chest, we'd want invite attack speed, preferably, and, you know, something like reduce damage from elites or uh, life. We have explosive blast on this one because we still use this one for our man rasha or fire rasha, and those are great builds you can see here. Self plug. Pants, we want. Int Vite Armor, preferably physical resist on the secondary. Boots, Int Vite Armor, you know, movement speed's fine. Physical on the secondary would be great. Fazul's and Probable Chain, we'd want Int Vite Life Armor, preferably fire on the second, or not, sorry, preferably physical on the secondary. And then we would want 50 stacks. That would be the dream. This one only rolled with 46. On the offhand, this is kind of hard to roll. It's kind of hard to get an ancient one of this. But you want to have intelligence, critical hit chance, cooldown reduction, critical hits gain, four arcane power, and then that meteor damage is something that always rolls. Doesn't matter. Uh, but that you want all of those stats. Those are great stats to have on the Starfire or the Ingyam. Again, guys, you can wear the Ingyam here or the Starfire and cube the other one you're not wearing. I just happen to have a pretty damn good Starfire, so we're wearing that. And our Ingyam's not as good, so that's why. But you want damage roll, intelligence, cooldown reduction. Bracers, you want lightning skill damage, int by crit chance. On the necklace, you want lightning or intelligence with crit chance, crit damage, and a socket. On the rings, <sighs> Obsidian the Ring of the Zodiac can only pretty much roll this, which is attack speed, critical hit chance, cooldown reduction, and resource cost. You don't want to get rid of that resource cost because you don't really need it and go for a socket. And that's pretty much the only stats you're ever going to be able to get. But, of course, the dream would be to have 7 attack speed, uh, 6 crit, and 8 cooldown reduction. Ring of Royal Grander, it's not the best ring. Again, we would rather wear a Man Alt Heal ring. We just haven't found one with cooldown reduction. So on this one, we have Int, attack speed, cooldown reduction, and socket. One really important thing to note here is you absolutely have to have lightning damage as your highest skill damage. 
That's so that when you go into Archon, as you see here, I am, I'm, seeing, I'm shooting a blue laser. If you're shooting a laser that's orange or purple or blue or maybe like a lighter blue, like cold, uh, you're doing it wrong. Archon is based on your highest elemental damage. We gotta be doing lightning damage inside Archon form. In the queue, guys, just as we mentioned very briefly, you went in Gyam. Um, if you do not run an in Gyam in the cube, you're running Starfire and wearing in Gyam, but both these weapons need to be in your build. Same thing with Swami. You can wear the Swami and wear the Talrasha belt, but Swami and Fazula's Improbable Chain have to be in the build. And of course, on the Jewelry Shot, we're running Manald Heal. If we're not having that in the cube, we need Ring of Royal Grandeur or Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, but all three of these items have to be in the build. All right, skills. Again, what we're trying to do here is cast all four elements, just like the other builds that we posted. This uses Tarasha four piece, Tarasha six piece, which are both dependent on casting all four elements. So lightning, we're covering lightning with any ability we cast in Archon and Arcane Torrent static discharge. Arcane Torrent is also great uh, as a spender to rock Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, which reduces the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you hit with the resource spending attack. So you're just going to sit there and you're going to spam, you know, static discharge and the cooldown of Archon is going to go way down. Uh, energy armor, force armor, incoming attacks that would deal more than 35% of your life are reduced to 35% of your life. This is amazing. I would encourage you, if you don't think this skill is that beneficial, to run something else and see how many more times you proc your unstable anomaly. Frost Nova, Frozen Mist, uh, we have to run... This particular rune, because it's the only rune of Frost Nova that deals damage. And with this particular skill, we like to bind it to our one key, and in this skill, we like to numlock. So it's just always casting. And that's why you never have to worry about if your cold proc is up for Talrasha, and we'll get to that in a minute. Archon, you want this with Combustion Rune? And this might be a little confusing, because earlier I said you want to be doing uh, lightning damage inside Archon, so you would think that you would pick you know, one of the, the runes that has lightning damage on it. But again, Archon is so, like the damage you do in Archon is solely based off your highest elemental damage. So that's kind of confusing. But you want Combustion on this one because this will proc the fire piece of your Talrasha. Teleport Calamity deals arcane damage when you teleport. This will proc the arcane piece of your Talrasha. I'd really, really recommend having this on your, your third skill slot, Teleport, because when you're inside Archon, you're also going to be using this skill key to teleport. So definitely put it on your three key or whatever you have it bound to. And then we're using magic weapon deflection. When you perform an attack, you gain a protective shield for three seconds, absorbs 4% of your life and damage. This just gives us that little bit more toughness. This is a really squishy build. But if you stay away from mobs and play like you're supposed to, it can feel somewhat tanky, especially in the lower GRs. Passive evocation, what build doesn't use this? It's such an amazing passive. A flat 20% increase to cooldown reduction. What's not to love about that? Paralysis, you absolutely must have. The build revolves around this passive. Manalt Heal requires this passive. This is not up for negotiation. You have to run Paralysis. Power Hungry, again, we talked about you want to stay away from the mobs. So the further you are from mobs, the more damage you're going to do. And that that's based on Starfire, that's based on Zyze, and that's based on Power Hungry. So this is a great skill for this build. And Unstable Anomaly, obvious choice. Uh, if we die, this will save us from death once, you know, once every 60 seconds, which is really great. All right, so we've talked about the mechanics, how this build works. Uh, one of the things I see a lot of people mess up on is the Tal Rasha 4 and 6 piece bonus. You want to be casting all four elements. So... You'll have your Frost Nova on autocast, so you'll always get the cold. And if you teleport around, you'll have two piece, or two stacks of Talrasha. And then if you use your Lightning, while within Archon or outside Archon, you'll be at three. And then when you cast Archon and that fire goes off, the combustion, you'll be at four, four Talrasha bonus. The problem I see with this all the time, if you don't teleport between uh, when you pop Archon, you will only be at three stacks of Talrasha elements, and you're gonna be missing out on 750% damage. So you really wanna cast, just teleport in between Archon stacks. If you have your Frost Nova going off by itself, you're gonna have all four stacks each time, but it's really important to cast a teleport in between when you pop Archon again. Of course, we'll put, uh, you know, a 69 clear, a fast one at the end of this video. 69s don't take me more than five minutes ever. I like a three minute run. 
Um, I think that's the sweet spot. The problem is sometimes you run into risks that like you don't get elites all the time or you'll go into the sewers and you'll go like two minutes without getting an elite and then the rift clears like super slow. But but hopefully it's clears up a lot of the questions you guys have about how this build works. Like most builds, the mechanics with wizard builds, they're a little tricky and you really need to understand them to get the full power out of these builds. And again, we'll link the written guide to this, which is not ours in the description below. Go give that a like. As always guys, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions. We'll do gear checks, whatever you need. We're not too cool, but that's gonna do it for this build. Peace out. All right. So we're not. Numlock cast Frost Nova. Get this thing going. Make sure we cast our deflection and our arcane armor. Got a leaf pack right at the gate, which is usually pretty good. Yellow packs, I prefer a blue pack, but that's cool. We got the Ingyam Deuce. Now we're kind of flying. Doors. Doors suck for wizards. It'd be great if we kill this guy, because then we get no cooldown on our Archon form. But we did that to you. Do some cast of static discharge. It's fine. Now we got new juice. Fill some trash on the way. Get the pylon here. We keep our distance, like we said. We get a lot of things that get more damage based on the distance from the mob. Make sure we teleport there between the Archon recast. We have our Tal. Uh, Four stacks going. We got Ingyam Juice. This will be our second pack. So now we have no cooldown whatsoever on our Archon, which means we can kill Trash if we want to, or we can just try to find the next Elite as fast as we can. We found an Elite here. We want to keep our distance. If we can. This guy's got a lot of health. Whatever not. Got the Ingyam Juice. Keep flying. Another Elite. Alright, make sure we cast that Teleport. Don't forget that. Important. I thought we were gonna get slammed there. <laughs> like, oh god. See, Tal 4 dropped, but that's to be expected. Because this form lasts for longer than 8 seconds. Got a Pylon. Woo, we procced. Probably wasn't too wise there. You gotta be careful when you pop these uh, pylons sometimes because you'll get those like sword guys like we just got and they just like one shot you. you gotta make sure we cast that slow time orb around us. Are there any elites here? There we go. Left the globe there, but it's fine. Fighter caves. Power. It's always good. Watch everything melt now. I'm gonna make sure we pop Archon before we kill that elite to get to Ingyam. Need to find elite though. Nope. We kill all elites, apparently. Uh -oh. Why not leave that whole floor? So now we're down. We're gonna have to cast. Well, not really. Healers or what? Why is he so far away? A blighter. This guy can be dangerous in melee range. Sometimes they like don't take much for damage. Whoop. Oh my god, Brock! Ugh. Close. Not as fast as we've ever done, but I mean, totally respectable. It's a 69. For Diablo's sake. But that's all there is to it, guys. Pretty fun. It's really interactive, which is cool. But yeah, peace out.